Today's project, the tried and true Logitech, um, it is an X530, and I don't have the little 15 pin um, D sub connector that, that connects into here. Uh, I actually tried to give this away and nobody wanted it, so I thought I'm going to see if I can turn this into a remote subwoofer to augment the little garage stereo system I've got here. I've actually got a DTX sub here that remote will turn on like that which actually has pretty good sound but I thought as a bit of a project I'm just going to see if I can repurpose this to save it going into the bin. So it looks like this is pretty tight. So what I'm going to do is see what the restriction is. It looks, feels like it's this power cord. So that should be pretty easy. I'm just going to clamp that so that I can, there we go, remove it. So pop that off. And now hopefully, hey, so that was, that was right. So these are actually a good little speaker system and as we pull it out you'll see that there's probably bugger all to it okay we've got a speaker in there that's hopefully connected by cable so we've got a couple of wires that I need to disconnect a couple of wires in there so I'm gonna have a bit of a play see what I can pull out without sort of damaging this too much because I actually do want it to keep the the box and then uh, I'll have a look at the back of the the pinouts so I don't actually think that I can pull the amp module off and get behind it uh, unless I pop the speaker cone out and take the grill off just to give me a bit more access. So even though I don't mind destroying this I'm actually just using a pointy end little skewer just to lever off the grill just a good technique anyway and we can see one five and a quarter inch driver so don't really need the surround on all I want to do is take the woofer out and there we go that's soldered so I'm gonna have to uh, fire up soldering iron and desolder that. Now you don't need to mark which is positive and which is negative because there's no phase correction on this sub um, because there is a little negative marker on the tab. It's actually not great weather to be soldering in. It's about eight degrees outside. Pull this out and at least get access. Uh, that's the supply from the transformer which you can just see down the bottom there. Basically, I am going to unsolder this. Now, that's the. this is a bit of a, a sideways um, tip here. But just to give you an idea, you don't need a voltage test whether these are polarised or not. Yeah. Uh, because you can see you've got a big filter capacitor here. and We've got two diodes. And the diodes basically turn this into a half-wave rectifier. So what that means is that this signal, this supply, is absolutely positively AC. Which means you don't need to worry about which is positive and which is negative you can just unsolder these with impunity. Alright, done. This is out, which is great. I'll leave everything else. So, yeah, a very, very well made bit of gear actually. Um, no scorching on the back, so the power transistors haven't been flogged, so I know it works, because when I did have one of these X530s, uh, uh, I tested it just to make sure everything worked, and it did. So, I'm just going to uh, try the pinouts, um, and I think I can get this to work. So, next step, just go around, unscrew anything that looks like it's going to screw into the case. So, any of any like this one, I've levered off the the volume, the, the base control knob, and I'm pretty sure that because that potentiometer is standalone that I don't actually need to put in or replace the volume potentiometer that is part of the uh, the remote uh, connector. So if it is, I know it's a, um, or some web, web trawling indicates it's a, it's a 10 kilo ohm, 10 to 0 kilo ohm potentiometer. So you do have to screw all of these out, get a flat blade screwdriver, just gently wedge it in along the back there just to crack off any any kind of sealing agents. You can see that they've got a little, used a little strip of rubberized adhesive. 
So really, once that's unscrewed, because I'm a bit of a deal, I didn't think about that D sub 15 port. Now, these are the 15 pins on the back of the board, and these are the 15 pins on the front of the board. And, and I've decided not to pull this apart, and the reason is that the power transistors that you can see in the back there are actually connected uh, via these screws into the heatsink. So what that means is if I crack those off, I've got to then re-apply um, uh, thermal paste between the power transistor behind it, and they're the, they're the, um, the solder joints for that. I've got to reapply um, paste, thermal paste, and I don't want to do that. So what I'll do is I'll just do some connectivity, work out which pins uh, connect to the front, and what I'll then do is I've got my little cheat sheet here that shows me that pins, uh, the, in, the mono input is between pin 6 and 10, and pin uh, 8 and 12 is the switch. So that is, um, that's the female side on the sub, which means that's what it should look like, like that. So what I mean by continuity checks is I've just, because my pins are too fat to get into the end of the D sub 9, at the end of the D sub 15 female slot, uh, male slot, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, there you go, so you can see that that bottom right there is that one there, which is um, whichever pin that is. Alright, so all the soldering is done, so the two yellows basically are the switch because polarity is irrelevant, and the orange and the red uh, represent represent the mono input so we've got 10 and 6 so I'm just going to do a test hookup now just to see if it works I also believe that a couple of these pins will power uh, an LED so if I get fancy and if I can get this thing to work uh, on a test bench level then I'll put an LED to it so I can uh, see when it's actually active and got power okay so to test it I've still got one original speaker going So I've definitely got speaker here. So this is going to be my test uh, supply into the inputs, the mono input. Okay, so that is the power supply to the transformer that's in the sub. I've, you can see that I've sold it back up. Uh, at the moment, everything is dead. But what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to put some power on and see what the AC... Uh, voltages and, uh, and my multimeter is set for AC 14.32 volts can you see that okay so I'm just gonna so everything basically is I've got power here this is all set up I'm just gonna turn this volume down and use my trusty remote click <laughs> Success. So I'm just going to let this run for a while, just to do a bit of a smoke test, make sure nothing overheats and pops, but that is a success. Woohoo! So I'll just make this, all this wiring a bit more permanent. Oh, look at that cone deflection, that is wicked! So that is pin 15, and pin 15 and common which is 10, between 15 and 10, gives you 6 volts. So that's going to be my LED uh, light source. So this is my collection of old switches that have been pulled from electronics over the decades. So all I need is a, a dodgy little switch that I can use as a power switch. Nothing special, nothing precious. So that will do. It's as ugly as sin. Right, always use a pilot first. Alright, everything's pretty much back together, so I've got my switch. Haven't hooked up an LED, don't know if I can be bothered. Um, extended my little leads out, I'm just going to, I've just drilled a hole through there so the leads will, will come out. That'll be the, the mono supply in, uh, otherwise it's all reassembled, got the little 
dial back on the uh, the pot and just going to reassemble and uh, hook up the speaker, solder it all up and give it another test. Okay, just check polarity. That's one of the last steps. I just need to put all the screws in and we're done. Okay. Perfect crime. All right, so I've got this hooked up to uh, just to my phone, so it's a little bit dodgy. Just got a stereo plug plugged in here. Got the two leads coming at the bottom here. Um, all right, turn that on. So the volume knob works as it should. 104 hertz. Sixty-eight. Oh yeah, check that out. Thirty hertz, doing pretty well. It's a pretty good count excursion there. Uh, 17 hertz. 10 hertz. It's not bad. It's still generating a signal at 10 hertz. kilohertz. Alright, it's a success. Cool. Got myself an active sub. So how does it sound? Well, to be honest, handles the bass alright. It's not too bad actually. What I really need is an active crossover going into here, but it works. Not too bad.